So you just downloaded Dundas BI. I envy you. You just stepped in to one of the largest and most powerful BI platforms in the world. Now, to be frank, well, well, to be frank, I'd have to change my name. But I've personally been working at Dundas now for 14 years. I've been teaching, consulting, and using these tools for as long as I can remember. My goal today is to take you through the application and give you a couple of tips to get you started as a new user. I'm Jeff, and this is Off the Charts with Jeff. So first things first, you should understand that there are different types of users in Dundas BI. And the goal of what I'm showing you today is really gonna be positioned at sort of this bottom user that I'm showing you right now. The very technical user, my assumption is you've come in and you're probably evaluating Dundas for your application. So you're kind of doing everything from the technical all the way down to the business user experience to start. So if you aren't in the technical role today, this video probably isn't as applicable to you. This is really for someone new who is a developer, who's first downloaded the application and just wants to get a quick handle on how to get started and how to keep things going smoothly. So the first thing you're gonna see when you run Dundas BI is a homepage that looks like this. The purpose of the homepage is just to give you quick access to the content that you've created and to allow you to get at the new building sections of what you will want to create. What I wanna point out is that a lot of people overlook this project idea. So you'll notice as I mouse over this thing on the left, it says active project, my project. And if I expand this, you can see that I have a lot of projects in my system. Now, you're not gonna have this, you're probably gonna have a my project, a globals project, and if you installed it, a samples project. Be mindful of where you're creating content from the beginning. Uh, the purpose of the my project is a personal folder, so anything you create in there is meant to be for you. And yes, you can move things and you can publish it, but if your goal is to share content among different employees, you don't want to be building necessarily in your My Project folder. The global, on the other hand, is meant to go for everybody. So I would recommend as a starting point, maybe to look at the global project. For absolutely sure, don't build in the samples project. So do make sure which one is active for you right now. And when you start building, make sure you're in the one that makes sense for what you need to do. The next thing that you want to understand is that there's different ways that data can flow into Dundas BI. So if you look at the top, we have a direct connection. We have a data connector, and I'll actually show you this in the file system. There's a data connector. I've got several in my case. You can use data connectors directly on your dashboards. So you don't have to go through any other layers. There's a lot of folders here. If you wanna just go direct, it can be data right to dashboards, skipping everything else, which is a good way for you to get started with the application and not worry about all these different sections. You'll also notice that we can pass through our warehouse layer, which is our data cube, which is very handy if you need to do any transformations or anything. But my goal for you to get started and just learn the application slowly is to probably stay out of that. Go direct at a data connection and just leave it data connection to dashboard. Don't worry about the other pieces yet until you're comfortable with those first. The next thing that you should really take the time to learn is the data analysis panel. When you drag data from a data connector or from a data cube onto the dashboard, it's gonna create something called a metric set. Really getting familiar with this panel is gonna help you a lot, right? Understand what it means to drag a dimension into a measure. Understand what it means to drag a dimension into the rows section. You should almost be able to predict what it's going to do with the picture as you start dragging information onto the screen. So the more familiar you can get with these four sections within the analysis panel is gonna take you a long way. And our e-learning, which I'll show you later, will certainly walk you through this, but it's imperative that you take the time to understand this piece at least. So one of the next pieces of advice that I can give you is to keep organized. You'll notice that there is a file system in Dundas and you don't wanna go and build lots and lots of objects as you're playing with the application. Like it's natural to create things and to build and to play while you're learning, but do keep it organized. Delete things that you don't need. You would be absolutely shocked 
of how many projects I've opened where there's thousands of items. And as we're trying to work out something together, the person I'm talking to can't even find the content that he has a question about because there's so much that they've created. Keep it simple while you're learning. Just make sure you're deleting things as you're building it. There's no reason to keep a billion versions of everything you create. Keep what's important. Now, another thing that is really worth your while learning is the difference between a view and a sandbox view. You'll see these two buttons here at the top. Now, it seems kind of odd that we would offer two view buttons, right? I thought so initially too, but it's actually insanely useful to have these. So what's the difference? If I click view, that's gonna show you what the end user is gonna see. If I flip it back to edit, if I go to sandbox view, you see it's gonna open it in a new window. And I can still get at all those toolbars if I want that same experience. But the difference between the sandbox view and the view is that your changes are gonna stick if you're in view mode. And you might want that. If I go to view and my goal is to have this dashboard drilled down or maybe expanded for 2014 as the default of what I wanna show, I can use view to let that be the default, set it, and then check in that change. Checking it in is basically flagging it as being finished. If I want to do something like that drill down, but I'm not sure I want to keep it for everybody looking at that dashboard as a default going forward, I should use the sandbox view because this one here, it throws away my changes when I leave. So just be mindful of the difference. And if you're not sure what you're doing and you just want to play with it, lean towards the sandbox view because then it can save you a lot of time of trying to get back to a state because you set something that you weren't quite sure you wanted to keep. So those are some basic things that you should look at, look at while you're getting started with the application. I can't recommend more that you go through the e-learning, which is all available here on our support site. The first two courses here are going to have you go through exercises, have you really learn and understand that data analysis panel and some of the workflow of the application. So it's really worth spending your time and going through this. Even if you're just casually looking at the application, the faster you get through some of these core concepts, the faster you're going to get on to building some really powerful dashboards. If you have any questions or you want to just drop us a message, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Ask Jeff at dundas.com. And thank you.